Hello, my name is Frank Lan Steinberg, and we would like to give you some information about wetting and dispersing additives today. So life would be, as you can see, maybe a little bit boring without color. And uh, so um, color is very important and color also can influence emotions, for instance. And uh, I think we should switch on the color now that you can see with color, it should be better, the life. Surface color is formed by absorption and remission. As you can see here on the slide, um, we need some light. The light, white light, is a mixture of different wavelengths. And when this hits the surface, some specific wavelengths are absorbed by the surface and only specific wavelengths are remitted by the surface. We can see these specific wavelengths and we can then yeah, call it a color, so the surface color. So that means color is formed by absorption. Absorption and pigment particles also have a relation that you can see here. Um, the particle size is there very important. So that means um, we have on one side the particle size and on the other side the absorption. And the smaller the particle size, the higher is the absorption. And when you look at the screen, you can see that here we reach a certain niveau, I would say, um, where there is no more absorption. So that means when we form smaller particle size, we do not get higher color strengths. What you can also see is that organic pigments give higher absorption, that means higher color strengths than inorganic pigments. When we talk about pigments, we also have to talk about hiding power. Huh? Because we only do not want to have color, we also want to have hiding power from pigment particles. And that works with the reflective, refractive index. That means pigment particles have a very high refractive index and so they can scatter the light in all directions. So that means when the white light hits the pigment particle, it is scattered in all directions. It cannot reach the substrate. The substrate is hidden in the dark and so we cannot see it and we have a very high hiding power. This is related to the refractive index of the pigment particles. So we need a high difference between the refractive index of the pigment particle and the refractive index of the surrounding medium. And when you, have, uh, when you look at ref different refractive indexes of pigment particles, um, titanium dioxide, for instance, has uh, a refractive index of 2.75, about. And uh, surrounding medium, the binder in this case, um, when the binder is dry, it has a refractive index of 1.4, maybe. Uh, so the difference is quite big, and so we get a very high light scattering from titanium dioxide, for instance. On the other hand, we can, uh, when we look at filler particles, um, fillers do not have a very high refractive index, like calcium carbonate has 1.45 about. So that means it is almost like the surrounding medium, like the binder. That means we do not get a high light scattering from the fillers. And that means the light can just go through the filler, can go to the substrate, is reflected by the substrate, can go out, we can see it, so we can see the substrate. We do not have a very high hiding power. There is an exception for this. So when we get hiding power from fillers, um, and when you look around in your room, you are surrounded by this exception because it is interior wall paints. Interior wall paints are usually overcritical. That means the formulation here contains more fillers and pigments than binder. And that means when 
the paint is dry on the wall, the surrounding medium for the pigment particles or the, for the filler particles is not the binder, it is air. And air has a very low refractive index. Um, and so the difference to the filler is very high. And so uh, we get light scattering and hiding power also from fillers. You can see this when you um, when you remember school. It was the same. There's the same example. You had uh, in the past at least. You had a board at school uh, where you could write with chalk on it. When the board was wet, so after cleaning, um, you could not see the writing by the chalk. Um, but then, when the water evaporated, uh, the surrounding medium for the chalk changed, and so it was air, not water anymore. And so you could see the writing, the same effect. We call it dry hiding. Huh? So the fillers give dry hiding. So they only give hiding power when they are dried. Light scattering and hiding power is also related to particle size. As you can see here, we have now the particle size related to light scattering. What you can see, we do not get high hiding power from organic pigments because the refractive index of organic pigments is like fillers, almost like the binder. And so that means when we create smaller and smaller particles of organic pigments, they get more and more transparent. Uh, so we lose the light scattering, we lose the hiding power, they get transparent. So of course it is uh, necessary in printing inks, for instance, to have transparent pigments and so in printing inks you find a lot of organic pigments. In uh, comparison to that you can see here the inorganic pigments that have a maximum in light scattering at exactly lambda half. So that means half of the wavelength of the light. There we find a maximum in hiding power of inorganic pigments. And when you keep in mind a lambda half that means um, half of the wavelengths of I let it be a iron oxide red. 800 nanometers is the wavelength of red light. So that means for iron oxide red, it would be 400 nanometers. So the pigment particles should be 400 nanometers to get the highest hiding power from iron oxide red. Uh, so that means 0.4 microns. Customers usually try to check their particle size distribution also by um, greenometer value. And when they say, okay, when they see five microns in the grind, it's okay for the particle size. Five microns on this side, on greenometer value, but we have to talk about 0.4 microns when we want to have the highest hiding power. Yeah? So that somehow does not go together. So please keep in mind, um, when we talk about these 0.4 microns, we mean the medium particle size and not the highest particle size, because with the greenometer value, you usually check the highest particle size. So, yeah, so we talk here about medium particle size. It should be 0.4 um, microns for iron oxide red. When the particle sizes get smaller and smaller, uh, the inorganic pigments also turn more and more transparent. And here you find the transparent iron oxides, for instance, they have a particle size of about 30 to 50 nanometers. Uh, so very small and they are on this end. So that means when we, or when your customer has an issue with hiding power, or with color strength in the beginning, it could be related to particle size. So that means he has to form smaller particle size because it could be that he is here on this curve. Uh, so he has to form smaller particles to get higher hiding power. And when you remember this slide of color strengths, he, he would also get higher color strengths. Uh, so we have to small form smaller particles. And smaller particles doing grinding is related to the pigment wetting. So when the pigment is wetted very well, we get high shear forces to the pigment, and so we can form smaller particles. And um, you can see here pigment grinding, so agglomerated pigment, that is where we start. 
Then we have to disperse it, so we have to wet the pigment, we have to grind it, and then we get primary particles and aggregates. When we do not stabilize the pigment particles, the pigment particles come together again because they want to talk to each other, and so um, they form flocculates again. Uh, so these are more or less the three steps. So we get agglomerates, we have to wet them, we have to grind them to get primary particles, to get small particle sizes, to get very high hiding power and very good color strengths. And then we have to stabilize these pigment particles against flocculation so that we keep our high hiding power and our high color strengths. That means we have to stabilize it. So, we have three parts, hmm? that is the wetting. We call it also dynamic wetting because the grinding is a dynamic process. There, um, surfactants can help. Um, you have to keep an eye on the foam stabilization of these surfactants. Um, for instance, our Sofinal 104 can help there a lot because it does not create foam. So, and it is very dynamic, so this would be, would help the pigment wetting so that we get the shear forces better to the pigment particles so that we can form smaller particles. Then we have to grind the pigment, that means we have to really destroy the pigment mechanically with the bead mill or a dissolver. Um, there it is also possible to help with the pigment uh, with a surfactant or, for instance, with a grind aid. And the grind aids, they can also help during this process to reduce the grinding time um, because they can stabilize the pigment particles in a short-term process um, until the stabilization additive, usually a polymeric additive or a polymeric dispersant, I would call it, can stabilize the pigment particles against reflocculation. Yeah, so we have these three different steps. We have pigment wetting, dynamic pigment wetting, then we have the grinding step, and we have the stabilization. So that were the basics about wetting and dispersing at first. Um, so pigments and color and so on. Um, and now we go on in the second part, so that would be the next uh, video, um, with the wetting, grinding and stabilization more into detail. Um, so, see you later. Bye.